France is day 775 of the unprovoked Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and the all seeing researchers published a new report based on the footage of destroyed Ukrainian and Russian vehicles in Pokrovsk region of Donetsk Oblast. This is the area of operations taking place around such settlements as Avdiivka, Krasnohorivka and Marienka. According to the All Scenes, as of 5th of April this year, Ukrainian defenders lost 152 vehicles against 984 lost by the Russian invaders in the area. These numbers don't reflect the true number of destroyed vehicles, but only those that were captured on photo or video. As we can see here, the ratio of the Russian casualties versus Ukrainian is roughly 6 to 1. Earlier this year it was approximately 13 to 1, according to a previous study. The Russian military instructor Sviatoslav Golikov, known for training the Russian invaders, in his Telegram channel often criticized the Russian command for sending the troops into ineffective meat assaults. Recently in his Telegram channel this Russian war criminal blamed the Russian command for the massive Russian losses in Berdichi village near Abdiivka, where the Russian troops were thrown on the Ukrainian positions and completely obliterated by the Ukrainian defenders using only small arms fire. Personally, I see two important tendencies here that we should talk about. First of all, the change in dynamics are directly connected to the decreased international military supplies to Ukraine. Since the Ukrainian defenders are unable to use artillery at the same rate as last year, before the pro-Russian protests on the border, blocking supplies, also different politicians hesitating to send the necessary munitions to Ukraine, this situation clearly benefits the Russian invaders who achieved success around Avdiivka, where their advantage in terms of artillery is currently estimated 10 to 1. Second thing, the pro-Russian propagandists cannot prove their claims of the Ukrainian defenders being obliterated by the technologically and tactically advanced Russian army, because what they say never correlates with the existing footage and the propagandists simply cannot photoshop so many destroyed Ukrainian tanks even though they're doing their best. That's why they use the only possible tactic of massively spreading fakes and unconfirmed lies about 10 million Ukrainians killed on a daily basis, women and children getting conscripted into the armed forces to fight in the trenches, and uh, the more they lie about it, the more people believe them, and of course platforms like Twitter greatly benefit the Russian misinformation efforts. While the generates celebrate the Russian advances in places like Avdiivka, the Russian widows keep asking themselves was it worth it? And the answer is, of course, it wasn't, because regardless of the outcome of this war, the Russian future in the 21st century doesn't look optimistic. But returning to the artillery and other so much needed long-range weapons, of course Ukrainian defenders could avoid the recent casualties, uh, had they been properly supplied with the artillery shells, and this is something we should all talk about every day. According to the Financial Times, the Russian terrorists changed the strategy of striking the energy infrastructure in Ukraine, using their missiles to destroy power plants in less protected areas. Previously, they would launch hundreds of missiles and drones at cities like Kyiv, but today the picture is completely different. Between 22nd and 29th of March this year, the Russian terrorists hit seven less protected power plants in Ukraine, including two hydropower plants. And of course, we all remember Kahovka Dam, right? All the Russian attempts to blame Ukraine for destroying it in 2023. And even though the damage inflicted by the Russian terrorists is not as massive in terms of scale, but it's much worse than in winter 2022, with uh, some objects damaged so bad, so they won't be replaced or repaired until the next winter. Today it's been two years since the Russian terrorists hit the train station in Kramatorsk, instantly killing 61 civilians, including seven children, with more than 120 people being wounded by the terrorist Russian attack. Cities like Budapest, Berlin, Prague, Paris, Rome or Warsaw share the same geographical space with Kramatorsk, the space called Europe. And if Kramatorsk falls to the Russian invaders, 
Unfortunately, we will see the same picture in other European countries within just a couple of years. Personally, I have this really bad feeling that the European Union is enjoying its last peaceful years. I've had the same uh, feeling in 2021 when I started making video tutorials for the Ukrainian territorial defense and civilians. And my own citizens were blaming me for spreading panics because, as we know, Russia promised multiple times not to invade Ukraine or any other European country. Friends, tonight I will see you together with Frankie and Kuhn broadcasting from Netherlands. Please make sure to subscribe to their channel and, as usual, you will find the link in the description. With that, I wish you all a beautiful day. I'm Operator Starsky. As always, be safe.